Welcome everyone to today's pick a card reading. Today's pick a card reading is to get to the bottom of whatever situation has drawn you to this reading because as the title says we're looking at what's going on underneath this situation, what's beneath the surface. That might be things that you're unconscious of in your own approach, attitudes, desires, around the situation. It could be information about other people involved that you're not sure about. It could be even just seeking information at this point that's unclear so that you can make the best decision to have the best outcome. The structure of this reading will start with some oracle cards that have been very specifically chosen for this topic and they are looking at some allies, spiritual allies and guides to go along with your spirit guides in making sure that we get to really the core of the issue. So I'll give you a little bit of an explanation of that so I don't need to repeat it in each of the readings. So we're using an oracle which is called Foxfire, which is an oracle based on Kitsune, which is a Japanese fox spirit and fox guide that is a shapeshifter and a generally very positive and benefic energy to bring some of the information we're also under here using an oracle that has people from a circus, people or animals or situations from a circus because the circus is a, an amazing, entertaining, glamorous, wild, strange thing. But underneath all of it, there is a lot of humanity and a lot of other layers. And so I felt that the combination of a, a fox shape-shifting energy and a circus energy really can get to the core of something that is not clear at this point. And then we're also using a third oracle, which looks at allies or potentially challenges that might also be around you. And once we've got a sense of that, we can then go into the tarot and, and do a deep dive into the situation and start to get the advice both from Kitsune and the others and also from your spirit guides. Now it's very important I think, I mean it's always important to tune into the best deck, the best pile to connect for you, but I have structured this so that you will get a sense about what is the key issue, the key message in that first review of these oracle cards. So I don't normally suggest this but maybe have a second one up your sleeve because if you go to that and you feel I just don't relate to that that doesn't feel like my situation it might be that in fact your answer is in a different pile and this reading is really to delve into a particular type of scenario now there may be a number of versions of that within the reading there may be a number of contexts in which the energy applies but I just think it's very important to make sure right from the outset that you're getting the information on the situation that's drawn you here Hopefully, though, you will align in with the right situation or you may have a combination of issues that go across a couple. So you might already be thinking I'm drawn to a couple. Either way, hopefully also the crystals here. So a jade crystal on pile one, an amethyst crystal on pile two and a clear quartz crystal on pile three might also help you attune in and find the deck that is right for you. Once you have worked that out, the timestamps, as always, are in the description box below. If you're not sure, pause and consider. And then when you're ready, I'll see you in your reading. Welcome, part one. What I probably should have said at the beginning in the introduction is the Foxfire Oracle has both images and messages from Kitsune, which is the shape-shifting fox, and also from Inara, which is the goddess that the Kitsune serve and it's interesting that the two cards that came for you are both from Inari so it is in fact giving a sense of a very high order issue that the Kitsune are bringing to the table for you to look at and the first thing that really comes across with this is an extraordinarily strong psychic ability spiritual ability this is this card is is in fact saying that you are starting to develop that ability you are starting to develop your skills now that doesn't mean that you're really new to something you may have brought this in from other lives but it is as though at the moment your psychic senses and the this particular circus character is about being able to psychically connect in with others and get the balance and the understanding about what's going on they're developing at the moment but this very much talks about being honest with what you see. 
And that is interesting because it suggests that something in this scenario, you are intuitively picking up something in your scenario that is not right. And it's like you don't have the evidence yet. It's not like you could point to here's the document that says there's an issue here. Here's what somebody has done that proves something is going on. But as you become more and more and more aware and use your skills, you're starting to feel, it's like a drumbeat underneath you about what is going on here. And I think that it's probably involving people who are very close to you in some way, whether it's family, whether it's a love relationship, whether it's really close colleagues at work. But one of the real challenges for this is as more and more information is being channeled to you, this card is talking about being honest about what you see. It's talking about when a psychic potentially sees something that is tricky or difficult in, in a reading and being honest about that, gentle but honest about it. So in this circumstance, I feel as though there is something going on in your life that you know on a really gut level, and it's probably why you've come to this reading, is not what it appears to be. And you're getting channeled a lot of information about this. And it has something to do with shadow, whether it's your own shadow and, and things that are around you in terms of your spiritual ability is making you start to think about your own behaviors, your own patterns in relationships and so forth. And you're knowing that you need to shift that in some way, but you're not yet sure how or whether it's about shadow around you. There is certainly something coming through with that. And we have the balloon seller from the circus and that's about being able to buy into and move with and potentially fly on the ideas of others. So when you put all this together, I feel like there is maybe someone around you who wants you to be involved in some sort of collaboration with them or there's a pattern within your friendships to do certain things and follow certain trends and, and go with the flow or it's something creative and there's other people involved and you're trying to work out what is you and what is them. But there's something underneath all of this where you're not sure. You're not sure whether, in fact, you're connecting to the right ideas, whether you're connecting to the right people, because something is telling you. And Kitsune and Anari are really here to tell you that there's, there is a truth to that. And one of the key issues for you is to be really, really honest with yourself about what's coming in. And what of it is stuff in your own shadow that you can consider and look at? And what is it in someone else? Now, the interesting thing here is I think you are starting to come into your power. And I don't know that you've necessarily credited yourself with this. One of the underlying trends, I think, in these cards together is a sense of someone who has may maybe tended to follow other people's ideas, trends, what's popular, because you haven't necessarily backed your own your own beliefs and your own capacities. But this is coming up, your, your capacity to really see what's going on and to understand the narrative of what's going on is really starting to emerge. And you're no longer able to just kind of stick your head in the sand potentially around something. You really, you really do see it and you're really wanting to have your own voice and your own vision. And it could be coming up at the moment that if you're tentatively trying to do that, that what's happening is that people are pushing back because they like their ideas better and they may in fact project stuff on you with the shadow dancer there. They may say that you're trying to be difficult or, or you're looking at the world and you're a conspiracy theorist, for instance, or something like that. There's You are getting information that is not accessible to most people because of your psychic abilities, but it does look like that's rocking the boat a bit. So let's have a look at what these cards are in terms of allies or other challenges. Okay, so the first one is Anansi, and that is a storyteller, and that's an ally. So that tells me that there is something in the way that you can tell the story of this, you can tell the truth that does help. You are meant to be raising something to the surface in this situation, and probably more generally, pile one. There's a natural storyteller in you, even if you haven't known it. And owning your own story rather than following other people's stories, only taking from others what enriches the story that you have and enriches the outcome, I think is, is part of the message of this, rather than following what people are saying. You're ahead of the curve. You're ahead of the people that you're around. But there is a challenge here because this is one of the challenging beasts. And I probably will not pronounce this correctly. I'll give it a go. But it's 
Olgoi Korkoi by the looks of things. But it's a, a worm in the desert, basically. But it's about virulence. It's about things that aren't good and how they spread. And so I think that part of this is that you're seeing an idea or a concept in this situation spreading. It's, it's coming from other people, I think, but you're seeing how it spreads and you can see the consequences of it. You have a very strong sense of consequential thinking. You can understand, and it's because you're channeling so much, where something is going way ahead of other people. But something in your capacity to tell the story of what you see in a way that people will accept it. And I think for some of you, it may be you do need to challenge the status quo and part of the shadow dancer being here is sometimes you can take the sting out of that and and stop people who would push back in their tracks before they push further and further by owning what is yours in it and by in a sense almost giving people the okay that you go well I used to think this or I, I understand that I do these sorts of things this is human let's work out how to work together rather than going head on. So it's it's about a balance. It's speaking the truth and telling the truth, but also grounding it in your own experience so that people can find it more palatable. And that's about understanding the story. So you are definitely getting information and to have got Inari in both of these suggests to me a lot of really powerful information is coming to you. There's something very important about this, no matter what what level or what situation you're talking about. It's important, at the very least, to your spiritual growth, but I think to probably more people than that because the energy you're working against is virulent. It's spreading. So you are being given this information for a purpose to try and turn that around. It's got quite a political feeling around it, a social justice feeling around it, a work organisation feeling around it, but it could also be things like social media, communities and that sort of thing. There's something a little bit dramatic and that virulence makes me think a little bit of things that move very fast through technological media, through social media and so forth as well. But trust your instincts. So let's ask Spirit with the tarot a little bit more information to try and work out what are the scenarios that this could be working for, for the people who've come to this reading? So the first thing I would say, it's highly emotional. We've got a couple of cups cards on either side of this so we've got the six of cups which suggests and it's reversed and the five of cups which is reversed that's probably more positive than this and I think we're seeing a progression the six of cups reversed suggests to me that for many of you the issues that you're dealing with you've dealt with for a long time in your life it's possibly even patterns from childhood from friends in your your childhood school that sort of thing and there is a sense of dis disaffection with things that you used to have nostalgia or feel good about. I do think for some of my pile one, what's coming through is making you wonder about your own choices and whether or not you were behaving in the way that you would want to behave. I think that the energy here is saying to understand that and be honest with that is really all that's required to let that go so that you shift into something more. But there is definitely a sense around here because we have the two of wands reversed that there are choices about who has the same vision as you, who are the right people to be friends with, how do you move forward with that. And I do think for many of you, this is impacting your material world because we have the Queen of Pentacles. I think that for many of the people who've come to this reading, you have got to a point with your career or a business or something like that, maybe a creative project, where you have established something. Even, even if you have been highly influenced by other people and by the community that you're in, you have started to establish yourself. And I think it's because you have that sense of self, this information is now coming through. It's like laying the foundation in the material world and you've done that allows the channels to open for the immaterial world, for the celestial world to come through to you and let you then nuance and understand how to make this even better. The Queen of Pentacles is a very strong sense of a balanced and fair and just person. 
I don't think if there's anything from your shadow or your decisions in the past that you're not comfortable with, that you will be able to continue to do that. You will let that go. And we have the five of cups reverse, which suggests that some of that is around relationships, could be romantic relationships, could be friendships, but they're the disappointments. It's like the disappointments around that were part of what made you go into your shadow and maybe listen to other people. You didn't back yourself enough. Whereas here, this is suggesting that you've got to that point where you can. You started to understand some stuff about the material world. So again, I get a sense there's a lot of emotion and drama around this, that it's connected to, to wider groups of people, potentially political, but also, as I say, business. But I also get social media. There's just a, a sense of of maybe those sort of communities and those sort of friends and really starting to assess whether where you started with that is where you want to be in the end. So let's ask for spirits specific advice about what to deal with this. This is really about working out who you should be with and, and people who you can be honest with and tell the truth to and tell your story to and it'll be heard, it won't be dismissed or competed with or told, no, you have to believe what I believe. If there's a, a shift in your emotional and social framework in some way, what advice would Spirit and Kitsune and Inari and the circus, circus people have for you? And this one jumped out, so I'm going to put it down there to deal with this issue. So I definitely think for some this is coming up in your workplace because we've got the emperor and it is saying that you are at a point where you need to become the leader in a situation, not the follower in a situation. It's, it, for some of you, it may literally be that you've stepped up in a career position now and it's a little bit disconcerting because you're used to being in the team and now you're the leader and you're not sure how to navigate that and maybe some people are a bit jealous, but because spirit has seen you start to move into your potential, you are getting this information. It Also, I'm getting that for some of you, if that's happened, you may be now able to see or hear or know information about the organisational culture, about the way that decisions are made that you didn't see before till you got to this level. And for some of you, that may be a cause for really considering whether this is the right place to be with the energy around this. So if you have moved into a more senior role and suddenly you see that there are cliques or there's a cultural issue that you can't really align yourself with, then you need to determine, is it something you can speak up about and change or is, it, is this perhaps not the right situation for you? Because there's a lot of energy and again, a lot of drama around you with the chariot there as well too. The chariot is a sign of destiny. So it says you're heading in the right direction. And I think that's why you're channeling more energy here. But there really is a question about the right use of the power that you have. So that's an important element. You know, are you using power in a way that goes to your ethical basis? Is it something that you can move forward with? And with the chariot also, there is drama around it. So I definitely think something in this has triggered drama. If it's not around your workplace, then it's still about you becoming a leader in some way with the emperor there and with the chariot and, and telling the truth because you're getting this information. Again, the four of cups, there's a lot of cups energy reversed here. So I think there's a lot of emotional undercurrents that need to be let go of. That's where I think the virulence comes from. I think that there's a lot of emotional drama around this situation for some reason, but you're standing very steady in it as long as you are happy to look at your own, your own issues and the information that you get. And we've got the Knight of Cups at the end. So that suggests, Spirit is saying that once you really fully understand your power and the information that you have, there will be an offer that comes to you to, to mix with the right people, the people that are happy to hear the truth, the people who are happy to share rather than dictate. All of those sort of things, there's potentially even a collaboration offer there where the ideas that the other person that the balloon seller talks about could be of benefit to you because it's a collaboration. It's not just following somebody because you've established yourself. 
But I definitely sense that Spirit is saying that where there is drama around this and where you can't speak your truth, that answers a question for you about what's going on under the surface. Where you can stand in your truth and where you can look at your shadow and the shadow around you and people are open to that because they see it as an evolutionary thing, that's where you should be heading. That's that's what this ability to tell a story is. And for some of you, may, you may literally tell a story with this. You may do a journalism article, you might write a book, you might write a screenplay to bring that, that truth out, but it's channeled on a very psychic level. It's working at a very deep level. And I do think for some of you, this is probably not something that you've really thought about in your life before. You've really been much more much more about the pragmatic side of things and, and the sort of way that power operates in the world on a very material level, but power is now coming to you in the form of truth. So, that actually puts quite a bit of responsibility on your shoulders. So I want to use a few more oracles just to get a little bit more information from the guides in this. And the first one is about what needs to be healed within you or healed within the situation to help you get, I think, to this emperor chariot so that the, the new offer, the new opportunity around you can be brought into being. Okay, so firstly we have have faith, and I think that is really pointing to have faith in what's coming through to you. I do think for most of you it's sort of unusual. Maybe it's coming through in dreams, maybe your thoughts are coming into your head that you don't really even understand where they came from, different perspectives. It, it could be for many of my pile one that this has been quite disconcerting. It's like like waking up and seeing the world in a completely different way, like you've walked into a different dimension or something, but you haven't. You're just seeing it more clearly and you need to have faith in the information that's coming to you because it is wise and it is directly channeled from spirit and it is because you are psychic and you need to have faith in the fact that you are. This is not you imagining something. There's something from your childhood, so that's picking up the Six of Cups reversed here, Something from your childhood wounded you, made you feel like you had to do what other people told you to do, made you feel like your truth would not be heard. I'm getting that for many of you, that psychic ability did show up in childhood, whether it was you know, so-called imaginary friends or really understanding the dynamics within your household. And if you spoke of it, it was not well received. There was a lot of shadow around your family for some reason. And not necessarily that they're bad people, but that there were myths and there were beliefs about what was right and what was wrong and what you could believe and, and what you should do that that sort of squashed this innate psychic ability and I think you pushed it under without even being aware you were doing it for a long time and you've now coming to the point that it's coming out again. It's another reason why this is probably disconcerting to you. Some people, if they suddenly start having psychic abilities, would probably be quite excited about it, but for you it's disconcerting because there's something connecting back to your childhood. But this the spirit is saying to you now that you need to reown that ability because it's a good ability. It's not something to be ashamed of or to feel is is somehow putting you out of sorts with people. If it does, then they're not the right people to be with. And if it did in your family, it doesn't mean that you have to abandon your family, but understanding the difference and the fact that maybe they don't have that connection that you have, you can be compassionate about that, but you can have faith in yourself. So I want to have a look at a bit of astrological energy around you, Pile 1, to sort of see what else Spirit can tell us to help you with this, to own this ability and to speak your truth. Okay, so firstly, I want to go to the third card here, which is the 12th house, because it's really confirming again how psychic this energy is. You operate very much from the subconscious and from the psychic energy. You're very much connected to that. I think you always have been, but as I say, I think because of fixed energy around you, fixed opinions, you maybe have pushed that down. But this is time to own that and to listen to that because you are very, very attuned to that kind of thing. So pay attention to all the things of the 12th house dreams, meditation, symbols and signs, and we are going to get to that as we close out the reading. It's it, This particular house is ruled by Neptune, which picks up all the things that are a little bit 
fey and unusual and that's probably part of the issue for you and why why this reading was important because you are very you have been brought up to be very material very scientific very logical but Neptune is all about the ephemeral energy that is just as powerful if not more powerful than the manifest world so it's spirit is definitely saying get in touch with that side of you fixed energy as I say around you I think is the energy of people around you there's a lot of fixed opinions and this part of this whole journey is finding where the right connections are for you and to be able to maybe with your story move some of the fixed opinions it may be that you have Aquarius strong in your chart you may be an Aquarius Sun moon rising or have many planets in that because one of the fixed signs is Aquarius and we've got Aquarius here or it may be that that energy is around you Aquarius is quite transpersonal too it's quite philosophic it may be that part of what you've had to deal with is that you see to the emotional core of something and you may be around people who are more comfortable just talking about theories and philosophy and not about their heart so that might be part of the issue for you and again that could be why we're seeing so many cups reversed but with the Knight of Cups there, there is a promise of finding that heart connection. So I think it's just saying that finding the people that, that align more to you and can connect more to the heart and connect to the psychic energy will work for you. So given that you are very psychic, and this is important now in getting to under the surface of everything and understanding the dynamics in your life, what signs we're going to ask we're going to close out with a card to see what kind of signs symbols synchronicities or energies you should be focusing on and that when you see or feel this sort of energy that you really know you're starting to to connect properly there and really starting to get the story structure right around this okay so we've got loved ones in spirit so this may be connecting if, if any of you do have people from your family or from your past who have passed on it may be that you have a sense a memory a dream about those people and they are coming to help you with this because they can see it from a higher level it could also be ancestor energy around that if you aren't in that situation then I think it may be saying that around your family at the moment there is a spirit connection there is at least one person who is a loved one who will understand and will connect so maybe the person that you instinctively want to tell your truth to first around your family may be a sign to you about the way to deal with this and that may be partly picking up balloon seller here where there was the, the capacity that sometimes the ideas of others are helpful and so it may be making that connection but as I say, if you have dreams about ancestors or anything like that, that could be a sign. If you find yourself reading about people from your lineage, if you turn on the TV and there's a documentary around that, these are all the sorts of signs that are coming to you that there is something that you are thinking about, considering or moving through at that time that is really grounded. So spirit wants you to think in those terms. So pile one, I think you're coming into your power and I don't think you realized you had it. But I think you're starting to realize you had it I think you had it when you were very young but you suppressed it but it's time for it to come out now it's time for you to tell your story and if this does mean that some of the relationships around you move on or have to change then it is time for that to happen but the promise is to move into your power and your balance and to find the right relationships so I think ultimately it's good but I do think you've got a bit of drama around you and I think you've got you've got to really understand and believe in what's coming through on your own do not do not follow someone else unless you're very clear that it's connecting to something that also connects to what you have coming through to you so I hope that that's helpful I hope it resonates to your situation and gives you some guidance about what's going on it's an evolution in you and I think once you understand that and own that you will be on the right track I do wish you well it's a big thing to to have that sort of energy coming through to you I'd love to hear about it in the comments if it does resonate and beyond that if you've enjoyed the video please like the video and subscribe and I hope to see you in future readings welcome pile two to your reading one of the things I probably should have said in the introduction is that this particular oracle has both the fox kitsune and also has the goddess inari which is the goddess that the kitsune worship and follow and serve 
So when she turns up in a reading, then I think it, it raises the stakes a little bit more because it's the goddess, but she is a very benevolent energy, so it's not anything to be concerned about. But she brings some really key information to you as well as Kitsune there to support you. What I'm seeing here is this is a very internal thing, I think, for you, Pile 2. It may be triggered by things that are going on around you, around friends, work, family, relationships, but you are in the process now of becoming who you truly are as opposed to who you might have felt you had to be to fit in with other people, your workplace, whatever it might be. And it's an inevitable process. It's potentially can be painful because you do need to leave behind anything that doesn't feel authentic to you. Something has happened. Maybe it's a new relationship that is really making you have to be true to yourself so that you can get the fullness of that relationship. Maybe it's that something has gone wrong in your workplace and you've left that behind and you're really having to reconsider who you are and why that didn't work and why that didn't take. But this is all about the difference between being what others want you to be and being who you truly are. And Inari is saying that you can go through that transition, but you are at the moment. And it could be literally just internally you're feeling it, or it might be being reflected in the external world. You might be finding yourself in arguments with people. You might be finding tensions in relationships that haven't existed before. You might be finding yourself out of sorts in a workplace where you've always felt fine before. It's all about that evolution, about you becoming more true to yourself. You may be transitioning in some way around your emotions, around your identity. There could be any of those things. But Inari is saying that you can leave behind what is no longer you, what is no longer serving you, that even if that feels like a loss, it's okay to do. And then we have this horse from the circus. And the horse is just plodding along, as it says. And the horse says to us that it has support and messages and guidance for you about taking things slowly, that you are on the right path, you are doing what you need to do. Even if it seems confusing at the point at this point and it seems slow, it seems like you really want to get to the point of this fast, this is saying this is going to take time and you have to be gentle with yourself. And if there are other people pushing back at you, it's like it's ultimately you are the unstoppable force, but there is there is something hitting up against it, I think, in, in your your workplace, in your relationships, that is slowing it a bit. But in a way, Kitsune is saying that's good. We have the tea ceremony. The tea ceremony is about contemplation. It's about taking the time out to understand what's going on and to be a dispassionate observer of your own life and of your own surroundings. And this card here with the acrobat from the circus, the heart of love is saying the same thing. It's the elegance of observing, just as this character is looking down and observing those around them to stay in the trueness of yourself, but not to respond or react, just to observe, to understand what's going on. So there's either just something within you that's occurring and you're maybe getting a pushback, or there's something that's happened that has made you realize that who you've been in your life to date can't be that anymore. But, but the guidance here is that you can take your time to do this. You don't have to do it immediately. So let's see whether we've got allies or, or issues for you to deal with. Okay, so this suggests that you have had real issues around people. There have been real challenges around people or a circumstance. This character, Thuath, is a character that only comes out at night and has a malicious intent. So it's hidden. It's, it's not, it's pushback or issues around you from others, I would say, that maybe are surprising and that have been confronting, but they're surreptitious. They're not obvious. And this character is a ghost and it brings a kind of misfortune to it because it's, it's the ghost of the past. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to be haunted by the past and, and malicious people are going to be around you. But for some of you, you may have come across pushback to something that you are becoming or you've come across a real crossroads where people have not been authentic, not been good hearted, and it's been a shock, but it's about bringing you more into who you are. 
So this, the advice here would be to let go of the past and to not, to not engage because this is about take your time to be who you are and just observe dispassionately. So if there are people around you who are being critical, being nasty, playing games, and this character could definitely play games, that's their own stuff. If you step back from it and just watch it and continue on the way that you go, you will be, you will be doing what you need to do. So let's have a look with the tarot about a little bit more information about what this transformation is and possibly what these characters are doing that has either triggered it or that is pushing back on what you are trying to become. this because it's got quite small writing so sometimes I have to look at it so firstly we've got the star that's an excellent first card to say again you are following your star you are on the right path your ideals it's something about your ideals actually and and who you truly are that is triggering this and you're seeing this very dark energy around you because you shine so brightly and I think many of them, it's very, as I say, surreptitious. We have the Page of Swords reversed. This is, this is gossip. This is pushed back on your personality or who you are. This is maybe even some people literally lying about you or the circumstances. And there's definitely because there's a sense of being embattled. It may well be about a philosophy with the Swords energy so strong there. You may have a very different political or social approach to things compared to these people around you and they're pushing back because you illuminate with the star here who they really are and they don't want to be seen like one of them only comes out at night and the other one's a ghost they don't they're slippery there's a slippery energy around you but you illuminate that it's just be aware that they may be sometimes misrepresenting a situation but you again it's like you just keep going because you have you are following the right pathway. We do have the Knight of Pentacles reversed here, which suggests to me that for some of you, this could be in a workplace and it just may not be the right workplace for you or the workplace itself may not encourage or support commitment. So it may be that part of your change needs to be to move a workplace. If it's not that, it is about commitment in some other way. So it could be saying don't commit to anything until you're very clear that it's going to fit the new you or it may be that you're around people who cannot commit to things and who who are as i say slippery but don't be too concerned the the energy around this says that yes you're right there's all this nasty rubbish going on but the reality is that you're on the right path so let's ask spirit for a little bit more advice for you about navigating what looks like a bit of a toxic environment that you might be in in whatever part of your life that you're dealing with but to keep you on that north star to keep you step by step by step heading towards what you are meant to be Okay, so Spirit is definitely saying that you don't need to be worried about this rubbish, <laughs> to be frank. You are more than capable of dealing with it. And that's why you can be dispassionate and set back. We have the Queen of Swords here. And at her best, and I feel this is you at, your, at the best of this particular energy, she does step back. She does consider. She is very logical. And when she needs to be, she's blunt or she cuts out from her life what needs to be cut out. So I think that's very strong. And you've got the King of Wands there too. Your creative energy, who you are creatively, who you are in terms of your love nature and your, your fire and your ambition is growing. This is a period of time for you to grow and you can be assured that those two energies together will rise above any of this game playing rubbish that's going on. You may, though, move on from somewhere with the Knight of Wands. You may move home. You may leave a workplace. There's, there's some sense of movement around you. It is, there is always a little bit of a warning with the Knight of Wands that sometimes the Knight of Wands acts before they think. But I don't think as long as you follow this advice to be dispassionate and observe, I don't think you'll fall into that trap. But, I, but it may be saying 
that there is a part of you that just likes to get on with it and likes to move faster and is a bit frustrated with the time it's taking to get through all of this. But Spirit is saying that that will, that will work its way through. Just cool your jets a bit. It's fine. There's also the possibility that if some of this drama has been around your love life, that new love is coming in. And if that isn't love life, then it may be a new creative idea or a sense of being really present in your heart. So you've got that sense of leaving behind what isn't working for you, following your North Star, taking it step by step, and then you reach that sort of new heart energy. So overall, there is something in this situation, as I say, that's toxic, but it doesn't have to touch you. You may have felt it needed to. You might have felt it was with a group or people that you used to be close to, but you're evolving, part two. You're evolving away from it. So let's have a look at some other details around what you can do to heal in this situation. And I mean, I think we've got a strong energy here anyway about sitting back, contemplating, waiting, only acting when you have all the information that you need or when all the drama settles down because it, it's like the drama there is almost like a fire that if, it, if you don't feed it with the wood of attention and and buying into it, it will die away. So let's let's see what other advice around healing energy for this that spirit has for you. Okay, so I think that spirit is saying that that what is what is happening with some of this, with some of this energy and this drama, is is like a cycle that occurs. When, when we are leaving behind and transforming, that there is always a bit of a rite of passage that happens with that, and there is some sadness with it. And I think that Spirit is saying that's okay. It may well be that some of the people who are now turning on you or turning on the situation or just no longer aligning with who you are, you did really care about them at some point, but there's a lot of shadow coming up from them, and that is causing you some sadness. But if you understand it within the cycles of life, and this is meant to propel you to the next level and to get you to understand and work with that sense of contemplation rather than always just action, then you can move through that and understand it and contextualize it. But yeah, there is there's so much, there is definitely a sense here for some of my part too that people are disappointing you and, and you're not imagining it. And that is a sad thing to, to realize, but that's part of the cycles of life. So let's have a look at some astrological energy around this for you as well, Pile 2. Okay, so firstly we have Capricorn. That does make me think a lot of this for many of you is in a workplace or something around the material world for you in some way, collaborations creatively, something even, and, then, and there may even be some issues around money, money and security around this that you have to deal with. But again, I think Spirit is saying, just give it its time, that will sort itself out, don't be too concerned. The tarot card associated with Capricorn is the devil, so there, that picks up that dark energy, it picks up being bound up in things that weren't serving you anymore, releasing yourself from that being the, the, the theme of this. We have water, and water is, of course, emotional and will pick up the sadness, but it's also the most flexible in many ways of, and in, in many ways, the most powerful of all the elements. It's just, But it's slow. So when you think of the changes that occur with water over rocks, over time, water will shape and mould a rock, but it takes time to do it. And it smooths out all its hard edges, and it, it's an incredibly powerful force when you let it flow and you let it have time. It could be saying that some of you are a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio or Pisces, or have that strong in your chart, or some of the people around this might. And if they do have, say, for instance, Scorpio energy and they're operating the shadow, then that's going to make them even more dramatic around all of this. So it could be talking about either of those things. But it's also talking about the first house, and the first house is who we are in the world. And that's why this is so important. Letting go of what isn't working for you, being true to who you are is important. The planet that rules the first house is Mars. So that picks up that fire energy. It picks up you becoming who you are. But it's all about your identity. 
the way that you appear, the way that you come across to people, the way that you want to present yourself in the world. So this is important to this issue. And the more that you get pushback, the more you know you need to step away from the energies like that and step towards those that are more accepting of who you are. So to help you with that and to close out the reading, I'm going to pull a card from an oracle which shows us the sort of signs and messages and synchronicities that spirit can send. And the, the purpose of looking at this is to know, depending upon what the card is, what might be giving you a sense that you're on the right track, that you're looking at the information correctly, you're understanding the situation correctly, and that you're taking the advice of spirit in moving through this process. Okay, so you've got an angel. So you've got an angel watching over you. Well, I think probably that's very true. And I think that also connects to a goddess watching over you as well. But if you if you see angelic pictures, sigils, symbols anywhere, if you read about angels, if you see angel numbers like 888, 333, those sorts of things, then look into that and pay attention to, to that when that happens because it's a synchronicity. It's not just telling you you've got an angel watching over you. It's also telling you that that is a symbol. It's something to watch out for, to know that you're on the right track or that an issue that you have to deal with is coming up. It may in fact be for some of my part two that when you get the most pushback from that darker energy around you, that's when you're going to get that sense of an angel around you. You may see, as I say, something that refers to an angel in some way, or you may call upon an angel. If you have a, a particular archangel, for instance, that you feel connected to, then it's a good thing to call upon that energy at that time. But it's a symbol for you as well. It's a sign that you're heading in the right direction. So, part two, I hope that that resonates with your situation. I hope it makes sense with what you're dealing with, because I think there's quite a lot of drama around what you're dealing with. But I hope it also gives you that really strong conviction that you're heading in the right direction and of the drama and the difficulty, this too shall pass. It's just a cycle. Move through it. Be as dispassionate as possible. You're heading in the right direction. I hope that you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And let me know in the comments if this resonates. I'd love to hear about what you're doing and how you're moving to be more and more yourself and how you are having faith in yourself about that. And beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. What I probably should have said at the beginning in the introduction is this particular oracle has both Kitsune, the fox, but also has the goddess in Anari that the Kitsune serve and worship. So when Anari turns up, I think it's a very strong message directly from a goddess level of of insight and intuition and so heightens what is around that reading so i think it heightens this reading in terms of its importance to you the feeling that i have from these cards is that the situation that you're in is about something changing around key relationships probably more friendships and social interactions than love though love could be involved in this but there is something changing, evolving. Maybe you are having to change and evolve. Maybe you are moving and you are going to be leaving behind your friends and you feel a great sadness at the loss of that. Maybe you are outgrowing some of your friends and you need to move in a different direction and it's hard to let go of it. Maybe for some of you, friends that you've had for a long time are now changing rather than you changing and maybe sometimes they aren't proving to be as loyal as you thought or in the worst case sometimes maybe they betray or move away from you in a way that's painful because this is talking about accepting change around you and understanding the cycles of change and that something is inevitably shifting in your life and I'd say because of the nature of this reading it is is something that you can feel it's like a distant drumbeat at the moment and it's coming and you know change is coming and and what what kitsune is saying to you is is accepting that because this is actually going in the right direction and inari over here with fleeting beauty is saying that that everything has its season there is beauty in everything and cherishing that beauty and being grateful for say relationships that you've had 
for their time, even if they do move on and you then evolve into another relationship. It doesn't diminish what was important about the relationship. It doesn't diminish what it brought to you, but it has its time. This card around friendship is that you will have great friends. Some friends will be with you your whole life and some friends will be here for a particular period of time and some friends will always be loyal to you and some will let you down. It's the juggler here. So between these characters and then the juggler, they're saying that life in terms of relationships is a bit like juggling. It's a, it's, it's a bit like understanding that there are so many different people in your life and some are going to be very worthy of a long-term commitment and others are here for a particular time and some may not be worthy of your love. Some may be more like strangers than friends. So there's something happening around your social circle, your relationship circle, something's shifting and I think some people are moving out but that's probably to bring new people in. So let's have a look and see what extra allies or challenges you may have. Okay, for a start, this pack has Kitsune in it as well. So Kitsune is very strongly with you, the shape-shifting fox. So that is suggesting that shape-shifting, moving into a new environment is somehow important to this. And you are being protected and watched over by Kitsune. It is bringing you the wisdom to know what changes you need to make and who to keep in your life. And it's interesting because it's with Cad... Cad a Joe. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that is actually two dogs that are like duality, the light and the dark. And it's sometimes hard to know which is the good and which is the bad. So I think it's all about the wisdom to determine which relationships are working for you and which aren't. And in a way to be um, detached from that, to, to not take it too much to heart, to understand that that's all part of the flow of energy and the flow of relationships around you because as I say they they tend to swap these 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 sort of dogs about who's good and who's bad and so it's it's really saying that it's neutral in a way it's a neutral energy so there's nothing really dark in this it's just about a shift in relationships around you and the wisdom to understand which ones are going to serve you in the future but honoring the relationships that you've had even if you move on from them so let's look at tarot and see if we can get a little bit more information about what's going on right now that's triggering you to have come to this reading, This probably this sense that things are shifting in your social circle and see what that, what tarot can tell us about what's happening there. Wow, there's a lot of sword energy here. Just need to look at this. It's sometimes a bit hard to read. Yep. So, at the moment, you are processing this very much intellectually. And there's probably nothing particularly wrong with that. It may well be how you get to the wisdom, and that may be how Kitsune is communicating with you. But it's trying to get a balance. The king of swords here, you're very balanced, you're very fair. The issue that can come with that is sometimes maybe you are too fair to people that don't deserve that there is a there is a bit of a sense of that around these two cards a bit of a warning from the circus people about putting that fairness and that balance and that empathy towards those that deserve it but overall you're very clear on that it's it kitsune is backing you in terms of your capacity to make these decisions you won't make them quickly and you won't make them lightly. You have the Knight of Swords reversed. That suggests a fairly conventional approach. It may also suggest that, that it is hard for you to let go of people. It is hard to sort of move on because you feel as though once you've made a commitment, that's what you should stick to. But not everybody is the same as you and not every relationship is meant to last forever. There's a lot of anxiety you're getting around this because you don't like to let go of people and you don't like to give up on them. But And it's causing you some issues around peace of mind. So it's, it's about how you view relationships and what you think makes them valuable, I think. I think to you, it looks as though you sort of think if you've got a friendship, you've got a social group around you, they should be with you for life. It should be, that's what being a good friend is. And you really do hold yourself to a really high standard about that. And so, but this is shifting. You are shifting. You are evolving to a new level, Pile 3. 
Some of the people in your life are no longer the right people to be in your life. And it is causing you some anxiety. So let's, and it's in within you. It's more that you're seeing this and not necessarily wanting to see it than that people themselves are doing anything bad. But some of them are not as aligned to you or are not meant to be with you as long as others. And you need to to recognize that and commit to those that, that are there for the longer term and honor and release those that aren't. So let's ask Spirit for some advice, a bit of advice about how to move through this quite tense mental energy that you have around it all. So I think Spirit is saying you just have to face it. You have to face the Five of Swords. And again, it's Swords energy, though we move out of that after that once you've, once you've actually confronted this. Swords energy, the Five of Swords is always about the battle and letting go that which is no longer working. It's, it's, not, it's a kind of low-level battle card. It's not a card that is a big argument, a big conflagration or anything like that. It's more... It's more internal, it's usually more philosophical, and but it is still confronting, particularly for someone like you who is very much dictated by your philosophy and your beliefs and your ethics. But you need to make that assessment. You may not end up actually in a in a fight or a debate with anybody, but it's it's more internal. Like Spirit is saying it's an internal thing. It's around coming to accept what is is for you in the longer term and what isn't and letting go of what isn't and when you do that it's saying that this nurturing abundant energy of the empress can come through so there is great love in those that stay with you and the relationships that you have around that and with the page of pentacles they are lasting so you will find the ones that are lasting and then you get the eight of wands which is this uprush of energy and freedom and happiness so it's saying once you go through the mental battle you get there now i am getting for some that there may be this may not be about friendship so much as family issues and the reason i say that is because of the empress and the page of pentacles for some and this will be quite specific there may be some issues about either you may be the page of pentacles here and it may be an issue with your mother or it could be that you are a parental figure and some of this is about accepting when your children need to to leave the nest there may be a bit of an empty nest thing for some of the people who've come here and it's then not so much about whether they're of value because of course they're of value it's more about understanding that they need to to move on and find their own life and be free and that way is the way that you keep the connection. But that time when there was the connection with the family had its time and had its purpose. And it can now be something else, but it has to change. So that's that's very specific with those cards. But it is possible that particularly some of you may be parents and it may be dealing with the empty nest type of scenario. Or it may be for some of you that there is... is a, a separation that's been brought about by something else in your life from a parental figure and maybe you can sort through that and open that energy up again so let's use another oracle to look at what healing energy could help with this because i think that you do need a little bit of healing help here because you lose so much in your mind and the thing about the swords in tarot is they're often what appear to be the darkest cards because we can be such so hard on ourselves and the way we think compared to the other so, so let's see what advice spirit has for healing for you to take you through this acceptance and in the sense of, of reconfiguring relationships around you. Okay, so firstly we have dreams. So I think there's probably a lot of information coming to you from your guides and from the divine in dreams pay attention to your dreams and it's a good way in a way of getting out of your head i know it sounds a bit counterintuitive because we seem to dream in our head but the dream state is not really the rational intellectual state it's far more connected to sort of water energy to the moon to neptunian energies those sorts of things and so it's a way of getting out of our preconceived notions and into a broader energy to understand 
the cycles of life and, and how this is, is moving in the right direction. It's also saying don't keep delaying this. It's like there are decisions you need to make or communications that you need to make. With all that sword energy, you need to have some conversations with people, I think, as well. So don't keep putting it off. You'll probably be prompted a lot by your dreams, actually. But the more that you put it off, the harder it is on you, the more that you sit in this state of anxiety. With these three cards, it suggests that with many, you're going to find the conversation, the, the, the communication really releases the energy and gives a different way of being. So it's only a very small number of cases, I think, where you may find that the friendship or the relationship moves on entirely or is not what you thought. But the more you procrastinate, the more you stay in this agitated state. So let's have a look at some astrological energy for you as well, Pile 3. Okay, so firstly we have the fourth house. That's about half at home. It could be. This is probably picking up some of that that I got, that some of this may be about family. So there could be issues around family and there's potentially with the second house issues around different values and different and different ways of being in the world. And in fact, even if it's you leaving the family home, for instance, then it might be you striking out to make your own fortune and so forth. So it's picking up that. But it's also more generally for those that that doesn't apply to. The fourth house is ruled by the moon and I think that connects to the dream card there. There is a psychic energy for you around this. But it's also who you are at the core. And that's maybe the thing that, that re, you really should think about. Who are you as a core? Because that, if you think about it, that probably shifts over time, just as relationships do. It starts to give you a framework to work out what is going to settle and stay with you and what you commit to. And where there are a similar sort of set of values between you and other people is very important. The trine energy is lovely to see here because it suggests, again, as I say, if you don't procrastinate and you have the communication, this will be a lot easier than you fear it's going to be. And there's probably a lot less loss than you fear is going to come out of it. What I will do, I want to see what the planets are here. So I'm going to shuffle the cards and then I'm going to lay them out until I get the first two planets to see a little bit more information around that trine energy for you because trine is an aspect in your chart and it's an aspect of ease. So let's see where the ease is in this. You just have to bear with me for a second because it might take a while to find. Well, we've got Neptune. That's one. So that's around psychic energy. And Mercury. Okay. I'm not surprised with Mercury, to be honest, because Mercury is a planet of communication. And this is very much saying if you communicate these issues, you're going to find it's easier than you think. It will clear it all up. Neptune, of course, is the confusion. The very thing that probably brought you to this reading, which is that things aren't clear at the moment, communication is the way to do it. And it will be simpler than you think. And Mercury in tarot is connected to the magician. So it really says back yourself that you have what you need to bring this into balance and to bring it into clarity. So communication, communication, communication. Given that there's also potentially psychic connections and the magician suggests that in the dreams, I want to finish up with one last card, which is from a deck which talks about psychic symbols, synchronicities, energies and so forth that may be a message from your guides so that it's something to look out for or to consider and it may be the point at which when you see something like this or you connect with this sort of energy, whatever card comes out, that it really says that you're on the right path and, and potentially is triggering you to have conversations at the right time. And that's really interesting. So we've got juggler twice. <laughs> So there's something about the juggler here. There's something about juggling things. So you may literally read about jugglers, see jugglers, or so forth. Or it may be that every time you have that sense that you're looking at a number of things and you're trying to juggle them, and remember that sense of duality at the beginning where it's not entirely clear which ones you really want to make sure you catch, that is, that is when you need to have the communication and move forward to clarify that so that you can keep all of the things up in the air but, <clears throat> but literally if you see the word juggler if you see people juggling if you come across a random youtube clip where somebody is juggling or doing magic acts in that way any of those things are symbols that 
something that you're thinking about at the time <coughs> excuse me i'm coughing that's the throat chakra that's again really showing that it's important to communicate and that maybe you have a bit of reluctance to do that so think about your throat chakra as well par three but that symbol and that energy and that feeling is a trigger for when to really move into this energy and move into the communication to clarify things. You're far more skilled at doing this and you will come out with a much better outcome than you probably credit yourself with because the juggler is very skilled at dealing with lots of different people and lots of different energies. But it is important to know that all the ones that you are juggling are the right ones to juggle, the right ones to have in your life. So Pile 3, I hope that that was helpful and I hope it resonated to your situation at the moment and gave you some insights into what's going on both within you and around you, with people around you. As I said at the beginning, I don't feel like it's terribly dark energy. I think it's just change. It's, it's you growing, it's other people growing and communication will probably sort out most of it. But if it doesn't, then honour the relationships that you have, honour what they brought to your life and move on to what is more authentic to you. So I hope you enjoyed the reading and if so please like the video and if you haven't already done so subscribe and if you've got any comments on how this is working in your life I'd be fascinated to hear about it in the comments. Beyond that I hope to see you in future readings.